This respiratory patient that you just walked into, they don't need a nasal cannula or even a non-rebreather. What they need is a lifeline. And CPAP is one of the non-invasive tools that we have that can buy this patient time. We can help offload the lungs and even stave off intubation with CPAP, but only if you know how to use it. Let's break down how to use CPAP step by step and talk about why each part of the process actually matters clinically and physiologically. Not every patient that's in respiratory distress needs CPAP, but the ones with fluid in the lungs or narrow bronchi often do. So patients that have congestive heart failure or they have COPD or even asthma, these types of patients can really benefit from the use of CPAP. However, if your patient has an altered level of consciousness or their systolic blood pressure is below 100, then CPAP is contraindicated. So the key here is to make sure that you use it early before your patient decompensates. So how does CPAP work? Well, CPAP is a continuous amount of positive pressure. What that continuous amount of positive pressure does is it's gonna splint open the alveoli like you're seeing here and creating some pressure in there. And by doing that, we're reducing the work of breathing. But don't forget that your patient's already struggling. So in order to use CPAP, we gotta make sure that we don't make this harder on them. So first, explain what you're doing to the patient. It feels weird and you need to warn your patient about that. Fit the mask snug over the nose and the mouth. Connect your CPAP valve or device and start with low amounts of pressure at five centimeters of water and titrate up if needed. Now this continuous pressure from CPAP is gonna keep the alveoli open, essentially creating PEEP or positive end expiratory pressure. Now by improving PEEP and recruiting alveoli, we're gonna increase what's called the functional residual volume. What functional residual volume is, is the amount of volume that's left inside the alveoli during expiration, allowing for passive diffusion of oxygen and CO2. The intrathoracic pressure is not the pressure that's inside the chest cavity, and this pressure can put pressure on the superior and the inferior vena cavas. When we put pressure on them, they decrease blood return back to this right ventricle, thus decreasing cardiac output. This can be beneficial in patients that have CHF. Think of CPAP like a powerful medication. It changes physiology in real time. So make sure that you're monitoring the respiratory rate, work of breathing, and the lung sounds. Check the SpO2 and the end tidal CO2 if you have it attached. Reassess the blood pressure. Remember that preload will drop when you're using CPAP, especially as you titrate up. Now make sure that you're watching out for fatigue or an increased altered level of consciousness or anxiety, because these could be signs that your patient is actually failing CPAP and needs to be elevated to some other tool. Thanks for watching. If you want our CPAP and our skills checklist, all you need to do is click the link that's right down below in the description and we'll send it right to you.